So you talked about the fish liver that you really enjoy. You mentioned brain and a whole bunch of different organs. In your travels with these different communities, what are some of the more unique organs and parts of the animal that you've tried? Oh, that's a great question. Okay, I, I mean, definitely my last trip to Japan. This is not in Okinawa. This is after Okinawa in, in mainland Japan. Uh, eating fallopian tubes that had uh, uh, fertilized eggs. That was fascinating. <laughs> that was fascinating. <laughs> and uh, surprisingly, really good. Really good. Uh, I would say the feet. That, that's definitely something. Feet is pretty common throughout Europe. So like chicken feet or other animals' feet. But I don't see Americans going for that. And I usually see them kind of shy away from it. But that is something that children and their mothers will fight over is the foot. Like the mothers will be like, no, 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 you don't get that. That is for me because they all love it so much. So, so that would be a little bit different as well. Uh, the, the eyes uh, tend to be very prized and also all of the the kind of messy bits. So, so, you know, when we go to a butcher, there's usually like, you've got your steak, You've got your fat rendered over here. Everything's very separate. The bones for marrow are clean on the outside, right? All of those bits that would usually be attached to the bone, they're some of the most flavorful. They're some of the best for fixing collagen issue and issues. And, uh, and those are very, very loved. So when, when I go to these regions, when someone eats, the, the bones are clean at the end. There's nothing remaining. And that, that would be, I would say, a big difference. The, the most unique thing I ever ate, though, aside from the fallopian tubes, would be in Greenland. And that was with the, uh, the raw fermented ox, A-U-K. An ox is a tiny little bird. And they catch these, the large amounts, they'll catch thousands at a time. And then when they're dead, uh, they will also catch a seal and carve out the inside of the seal, uh, you know, basically take out the inner organs. Then they stuff the seal with the little birds and they, the little birds still have their feathers on. Now the, the birds are dead at this stage, right? So, so the, it's usually about a hundred birds in a stomach, but of course it depends on the size of the seal. And then they stitch it up and they bury it in the snow and it ferments for a year. When they go to open it up, and this is a celebratory food, so this isn't something that you eat all the time, it's something that's for celebrations, like weddings or, or other celebrations. So uh, they open up the seal belly, and the birds have almost liquefied. So they still have their feathers on there, but they've almost liquefied. I had read about this dish for over two decades. And I didn't know if I would ever consume it because there are several explorers that died consuming this food. They got botulism. Now the locals, they don't get any problem with it because they have a good microbiome. And so it, it only is benefited by this food. But I did think I would have to use my very polite face and, uh, and, uh, as much grace as I could muster while I consumed it. You know, I was not expecting this to taste good. <laughs> But I was shocked. It, it was delectable. The, the meat, because it had kind of liquefied, it melted in your mouth like the best French duck. Like if a five star, f higher than five star restaurant would, would produce for you. So it, it was really good. And you could see why all the old ladies love to go after it and pick, up, pick off the feathers. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. What the Blue Zone is, is selling fits with the narrative of what we've heard really since the food pyramid and promotes that further. We tend to be like, okay, I'm going to have this organ and nothing else. That's not the ancestral way. The ancestral way would be.